I'm Johnny. And it's time for chords. So what we're going to do in a couple of seconds, we're going to jump right on over to the drawing board. But before I start, I just want to say one little thing. You're going to want to watch this all the way through the end because I have a special segment for all y'all. Not even Shell knows about it yet. Okay, so what are chords? Two or more, sometimes even three or more notes playing at roughly the same time. But when you talk about chords, we have to start getting into some serious musical theory. And you all know what that means. Baby eating. We have this major scale that's notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, right? Because it starts on C because reasons. Then we have these other notes that are C sharp, D sharp, E sharp. Well, hang on. Let me just read you something from Wikipedia, all right? For example, C sharp cannot substitute for a D flat in equal temperament, even though in equal temperament they are identical pitches, because the D flat can serve as a minor third of the B flat, B flat minor chord, and a C sharp cannot, and the C sharp can serve as the fifth degree of an F sharp major scale, while a D flat cannot. No! No, 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 no. This is baby eating. This is a cargo cult. We're not doing this. I'm going to explain to you chords, but it's going to be totally different. But we kind of have to start at the beginning, but we're going to start a little bit differently because music is contextual. I said that in the last video about musical theory. It's not about the names of the notes. It's about the intervals between them. That's what makes a difference. There's this thing. It's called a harmonic series. Now, Vihart, Link in the doobly-doo, also talks about this. But essentially, when you have a string like this, and it's vibrating, it vibrates along the length of that string. But there are other vibrations that are also set up. When the vibrates twice as fast, three times as fast, four times, five times, etc. These vibrations, like when you pluck the string of a guitar, not only sound the main note, like C, also sound one octave higher, two octaves higher, and then the note of G, and then, no, 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 we're not doing this. We are not doing this. This is more baby eating. The crux of this is when you have a pure note like C encoded in it, either by virtue of physics or virtue of our eardrums or virtue of how our brains work or all three, there are other notes and that thing is the major chord. And that is where Western musical theory gets all of its cargo cultish nature, but there's a way out. All right, let's take our circle of musical notes. We've all seen this before. I've drawn this many, many times, but now I'm not even gonna give the notes names. All right, so we're just gonna go all the way around 12. There we go. Now I'm gonna start giving them numbers and I'm gonna start at the top because this is our center note. This is our root note and we're gonna go around to the right and it's going to be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to do the same thing on the left-hand side here, but we're gonna call those imaginary numbers, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, and six is special. So now we've got the set of numbers around it, and we can start building chords that way. I've only just started exploring music with this kind of shape in mind, rather than using notes, using these numbers and imaginary numbers. I see some real power here. Now, that major chord that I was talking about, it looks like this triangle. And you can start to play around with other chords and making triangles. You probably always wanna use the root, at least to begin with. You will get a sense of how the chord sounds by its shape. Now, I thought about using negative numbers for the ones going here on the left, and it didn't seem right. So the reason why I chose imaginary numbers is because there is a very distinct relationship between the perfect fourth and the perfect fifth, and it has to do with this thing called inversions. But the basic theory is, is that you can go five semitones this way and get a perfect fourth, and then seven semitones and get a perfect fifth. But if you go backwards, if you go leftwards, the reverse is also true. If you go down five semitones, you get a perfect fifth. In short, there's a relationship between these two notes 
that is expressed inside of this octave. And when you number the notes this way, you can see how they relate. And now, tips for single guys from Justine. Just fucking get a puppy. I'm Johnny, and smashing the edifice of musical theory is fun.